Hello, welcome. My name is Sadiq bin Muhammad Khalil. I'm a lecturer currently in the Faculty of Art and Design in the Department of Liberal Study, teaching sociology, visual cultural studies, and also the 20th century modern art. So today I'm just doing some sharing on the local culture and global nation. And this is a sharing about the importance of Malaysian modern art in Malaysia. So culture has been an important thing because before we even know or found about art, fine arts, applied arts, there were everything was called visual culture. And from all that came visual arts such as Art for its sake, art for society, fine arts, applied arts, performance arts, martial arts, and so on. So all of these could be categorized as a product of mankind, not animals, mankind. And this product is called the culture, whether it's a material culture, as we can see, the foods, delicious foods, uh, the buildings, the monuments, or uh, even the clothes, drinks, anything that we can relate regarding some of the factors as you can know such as climate religion belief geographical aspects and whatnot okay so culture is derived from the latin word cholera just the ability to create develop and cultivate and it's been done by two types which is material and non-material and it abides abides space and time based on some of the factors as we can see in this picture, there's a small monk, and this is a sense of non-material culture, the beliefs of religion, values, custom, anything that does not exist but strengthened the world inside how they view things, which is the worldview, what they call it the Walton Shaw. Okay, so this is a statement on culture, which is, uh, culture and heritage is something that we bring as identity and it's true because in modern art as you can see it's been given a brief timeline and then contemporary art and some part of global nation so the first thing that we'll be talking about is modern art so this is the brief journey so 1957 if you see the world history the first Sputnik 1 artificial earth satellite was been launched and Malaysia was actually preparing their monarch, uh, constitutional monarch, monarchy. And they were starting having the Federation of Malaysia independence. So we can see that before 1930, all arts were traditional arts and were inspired by worldwide and Chinese painters. And there were a series of groups. And after 1930, uh, modern art started to merge its way into Malaysia until uh, the late of 1980s and starting from that it was contemporary art. So there were some groups called uh, Penang Watercolor Art Group, Nanyang Academy, one is the art group, Angkatan Pelukis and after that there were different styles. And again uh, one of the earliest uh, art school in the country was UITM and providing uh, the first to provide in modern art syllabus. So contemporary art, we can see there's three factors shaping this. This is from the Congress, uh, International Congress made, basically, uh, which from the resolution agreed that uh, all of the subjects should be traditional art, Islamic art, and universal style. So traditional art could be anything, ranging from any medium, sculptures, public art, uh, visual culture, digital art, and same goes to Islamic art, as you can see, and also same goes to the universal style. Universal style is the movements from outside, as for example, abstract, uh, pop art, and uh, other kind of movements. So global nation, high institution role, lifelong learning. So what is most important is that the global nation, the concept of lifelong learning skill is adopted uh, in the Malaysian strategy. And from this, we can see a lot of things being delivered and some of the niche and important things. That's why your item has been giving more and more. Okay, thank you. So stay tuned. Thank you.